I had the privilege of watch, observing him letting go a little bit over the years. And I think a lot of that had to do with the plane crash. I don't know. But after that, he was different. He was a different human being. He was a lot more relaxed. Um, and uh, kind of, yeah, it was he hired a defensive coach. I remember that letting go of the defense and just saying, okay, you take it. And then next year it was a different defensive coach. And he took it to a whole nother step of saying, okay, you do it and I'm here, if you need, but like, it's your, like your defense, you, you teach all that stuff. And it worked, you know, because yeah. people, there was a certain trust level and the players would see him trust the coach. And by doing that, we would trust him more, I, I think. And um, we were one game away, you know, so yeah, um, with, with a, with a talented team, but not as, as talented as the 13, 14 team by far. So there was a it was a very high level of connect uh, connectiveness or connectivity on that mm-hmm. team for sure, and he, he a lot of he deserves a lot of credit for that. Yeah, definitely. I think if I remember correctly, I don't know if it was you or maybe another German kid that he was looking at. Uh, he was telling me in Novak, he's like, "Yeah, I'm talking to this kid and had a meeting with him, and he he called me John." <laughs> it was like, "Yeah, that's the European way." Like. Because for him, it's coach. I mean, he's been head coach forever. Now yeah, I don't remember. Yeah. If that, was that you calling him John? No, those probably teachers? not. But my my story that he always tells it's it goes into that direction. Was on my so I, I messed up the TOEFL test. You have to like you have to do a, to, a test to get into as an uh, as a as an in, as a non English or as an immigrant basically to make college. You have to make a TOEFL test, and um, it's called tough and I messed it up. I didn't get the Michigan score, which is really high because Michigan is a really good school. Yeah. So I had to do it again. And I text and I, on the phone when I had to tell him that I failed, I cursed. I was like, this effing test, <laughs> F this test. And I'm like 17, right? And in Europe, nobody cares. Like we talk like I, I nobody gives a shit. Yeah. <laughs> And Coach Brian was like, hey, yo, 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 Mo, you can't talk to me like that. You, yeah. you can't do that. But he did it in a very calm manner. I didn't even understand the importance. But when I got to the States, then I understood what he meant. And on literally every recruiting visit, he would tell that story. He thought it was <laughs> of hilarious. course. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure he'll tell it to the day he dies. Like, <laughs> exactly. No doubt. But I, I do remember cursing the test though, for sure. I was so frustrated. <laughs> I bet you you riled him up quite a few times, like in film practice, whatever. And he has a propensity to call people by the wrong names. And I'm wondering if he ever called you Novak or Douglas. What does he call you? So he, he would call, I mean, he would call me Novak. He would call Novak Douglas. He would call, he would call Novak like a guy that played for him 15 years ago. Cause he's pissed on him with film. Like, did he ever yeah. do that with you with the, you know, any of us? No, but he would he would say I'm on Motron again. He did that with Jordan Morgan, I guess. That was like Jordan Morgan's thing, like yes. going on Motron. Yep. It's like a different planet. Yep. And uh, since I'm Mo, he brought it back. So I went to Motron too a couple of times. So, that makes sense. That makes no, a lot he, of sense. Every, he, I mean, yeah, he definitely has his things for players. I guess yeah. that's what coaches do. <laughs> oh, for sure. You you've had an interesting journey. You know, I always tell people like I wouldn't wish my recruiting on anybody. It was it was rough, it wasn't easy, and you had to leave your own home country. You know how hard of that, how hard of a decision was that, or easy to leave Alba, leave the the opportunity to play professionally, and then come to college. You know, you've always been very enthusiastic about Michigan. There's never a doubt about that. But was were you were you did you have your sights set on that from an early age? So not Michigan in particular. It was mm-hmm. more. The fact that I wanted to go to college, um, I definitely my both my parents were doctors, went to went to uh, universities. My whole family did. So for me, going to a university was always like a goal of mine. I didn't want to be the first one who didn't. So <laughs> I always wanted to study, you know, even though I, I don't really care about school that much right now. But yeah, I'll be honest, I would be a hypocrite if I said I'm like a literate man right now. But um, <laughs> I. Uh, yeah, so school was important. I want to go to university. And just knowing, like, the NCAA, the NCAA tournament, knowing the buzz about it and the vibe, I just I always, I don't know, fantasize with that American romantic basketball vibe that you mm-hmm. don't really have over there because you can turn into that professional level pretty quick and you have this dynamic of people making money for a living and – living their lives with their families like it's just a quick switch from youth to pro basketball yeah you yeah. i mean fulfilled 
that college dream and in a way like not many people do i mean you grew up in germany you had this long dream of playing like a national championship game i, I had that dream too and never got past the second round so you like how did you feel sitting in that locker room before that championship game like holy shit like this is everything i've been wanting since i since i've been a kid thinking about this yeah unreal i mean for like exactly like you i i remember being when we were after the first game in the final four i was in the in the hotel room with my parents because they got a hotel room the same hotel and we couldn't go outside obviously because everybody like would, would swarm us um as a team so we we would just literally hide somehow in like a good way right it was like super exciting but like i remember like talking to my parents and we were like dude like if i could have written down a story how it could have gone my college experience like it couldn't have been better than this no and in, in my wildest dreams i couldn't have written that down so to have that like click and to understand holy sh like we actually doing this right now together is is special man it was really cool and also knowing that it's really hard to get there you know like you you can take credit for that you can be very proud as that um as a team to do that um to grow that close to make it that far that's really hard so um that was a hell of a ride but also the two years before that like we were one shot away from making it to the elite eight you know and, yeah. and, and and play North Carolina in that North Carolina or Kansas Kansas no North Carolina in the final Kansas in the in the in the in which uh, in Kansas City so like we are close that my sophomore year too so those are all great runs and um, I will always think of that for sure so I'm interested in what you know like Alba or maybe some other team maybe offered you. Uh, before you decided to go to college that may, maybe enticed you to, to stay overseas, stay back, stay back in Germany? No, for sure. Um, like it was, it was a big deal in terms of just cause nobody had really done that at that point to go through the whole program, because most of these players, they start in like other regional clubs and then they join Alba Berlin, which is like the biggest team in Berlin but they start somewhere else. And I started at Alba just because I lived so close. So I was kind of the first guy to ever go through the whole youth program. Interesting. Um, and uh, it was kind of a big deal, honestly. Like, it was like, okay, this is our guy. Um, it wasn't more, it wasn't really about the money. It was more about the opportunity to be that guy that did that. Mm -hmm. um, so it was a huge deal. They counted a lot on me. They, yeah, they basically, I mean, I, it sounds corny to say that, but like a face of that youth program. Um, and yeah. um, I was going to do it, man. I, I, I was all in. I was so excited about it. I was in the pro team as a 16-year-old, like practicing with the pros. And like the coach loved me. I wasn't playing much, but I learned so much. And it, I just saw myself there. It's at home. So I loved that life, not going to school and just practice twice a day. It was cool. Um, and then, yeah, Coach B9 kind of effed up my plans or made them happen better. Uh, he, like, I cut, a, I cut it together a video. I told that already, I think. And then, uh, he recruited me. Um, and I was like, okay, college or that. And I had to make a decision. It took me forever. And I, I think it was like Easter when I, like, announced it that I'm going to Michigan. So, um, it took me a long ass time to decide. No, I, I can only imagine leaving home like that and, you know, being a part of a, a big club like that, that'd be the yeah. worst decision.